Why, hello and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm host and guide, Dull and Iron Shield as always, and we are going to continue another Lotro tale where we left off last time with this awesome, cool shot of Durin's stare. Oh, well anyway, I hope you have a nice drink to relax, hang out, don't forget to uh, maybe throw me a like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video, and let us have some fun, my friends. Alright, we're going to hop on Remy here, and we're continuing into the Foundations of Stone to the Underground Lake, which will be very near the, um... Um, where Gandalf fell in with the Belrog, right? So that's where we're going right now. So we're continuing into the dark places of the world. And there's also these very cool glowing mushrooms that you should not touch because they will infect you and turn you into a zombie. Ho ho. Yes, you didn't think there was zombies in Lotro. Oh man, look at this shot of the lake though. Oh, that is a scary looking lake. Oh my. The Durin stair. The winding stair that the Belrog and Gandalf fight all the way up to the top of the mountain after they fall in the crack. Remember, the crack is up there. Um, now, where are we? We're trying to look for some lieutenants that we think were probably infected by the fungal spore thing that probably turned them crazy. But we're hoping they have. Oh, and look at there's this creepy looking spider. Oh, oh, I'm going to fight the spider now. Let's do this. Come here, Mr. Fungus Spider. Well, he's dead now. So, also, don't uh, ignore the the scary wailing sounds. Uh, it just is uh, probably evil monsters. So, they have these nice little goats all around though that immediately will take you back to the refuge, which is really really handy. Um, very nice and handy. So he should be around here again. Look at this lake though, you guys. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at the lake. I'm sure it's okay to swim in, right? Oh yes, green water. This has got to be good for you somehow, right? <laughs> Let's see what's underneath. Oh. Wow, there's the stair. And the smoke effect, or the, the fog effect. It's pretty cool. All right, anyway, out of our way, creature. All right, last time we used the violin, right? So we gotta use a different instrument this time. Oh, we gotta get away from when they die. They drop their fungal spores. We don't wanna catch that. All right, uh, let's use the drum. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, nice 9,100 crits. There's one of the evil demon overseers. Again, I'm not sure we're going to see... Uh... They are very, very terrifying. They have no eyes, just a terrible, scary-looking mouth. I mean, they probably don't need eyes down here, right? Oh, maybe that's one of the guys we can kill. He's got a special name. He's a Pulum... Pulum Pulum. Yep. Did he have... Yep, he had the orders on him. Sweet. Yeah, man, look at that work. Does not look like he's doing so hot. Nope. Well, he's out of his misery now. Remy! Alright, you guys. I have, like, I have been uh, eating a watermelon that I've had for, like, three days. So, I have watermelon. Mmm, so good. You guys, what's your favorite fruit, guys? Put it in the comments. <laughs> I don't know if it's my favorite fruit. Hey, that's another one we needed. Sweet. Cool. If I can find one more right here, we'll be done. Hey! Is that the last one we need? That would be so conveniently easy. Oh my goodness. That is wonderfully easy. I'm That makes me so happy. All right. I know that there's a goat right back here that takes us back to the refuge, and I believe we need to go back to the refuge for this, right? Yes, foundations. Okay, good. So that's nice. That was super, super easy to deal with. So now we can just use this goat, which they conveniently put here. This little teleport goat. See, it has the horse riding thing on above it. It's a long way back to the Shadow Refuge. If you are not going that way, take my goat. Yes, I'll take your goat. Thank you. All right, sweet. The Shadow Refuge. And now we can just walk over here, and the Shadow Refuge is right over here. We can get that turned in and continue the chapter quests. Yes, how exciting. Oh, gotta watch your footstep. That was a drop right there, I didn't realize. 
Durin's Bane attracted many vile things, spiders, orcs, trolls, and who knows what else. Well, you might know what else because I already explained it in the last episode. Um, but we will continue on. Hopefully you watched last episode. If you didn't, don't forget, you can just hop on the playlist, you guys. They're all in order. The Lotro Tale series. You know that, right? I hope everyone knows that. We may have need of your help. We may you have need willingly. of your help if you offer it willingly. We still do not know what the orc causes the corruption that has taken hold of Mazog's orcs and made them this fierce and mindless glob... Globsnaga. But it is enough for the moment to know that their numbers are fewer. Thank you, Voice of the Rings and Zolan. Well, of course, we're happy to help. The shadow must fall. The shadow must fall. It is difficult to learn how much from these orders, but this I can discern. Mazog is seeking to enslave some of the nameless horrors beneath the nameless. That is the term that I was thinking. If I was saying void, the nameless. That's what Tolkien calls them, the nameless, okay? They're basically the demons and horrors of the underworld. Not being like, like, like Hades, like, that, like, not that kind of underworld. Being, like, underground in Middle-earth, okay? Not like a different realm that's evil. I'm, I'm talking, like, under the ground horrors. Just to make it clear. But why he wishes to do this remains unknown to me. For he does not need nameless allies to crush the dwarves. They are near enough to destruction as it is. No, he must have some other target. I fear it may be the Golden Wood. Home to my lord Celeborn and Lady Galadriel. Mazog does not have the foresight for such a plan. This must come from Gorothol of Dul Gudur. Thank you, Zolan. We mu have learned much from the efforts that will be used to us and to the dwarves as well. Okay, so she basically just told us that Gorothol, right? He is basically this human sorcerer who's taken up residence in Dulgador after the the other sorcerer, Sauron, left, basically, who is in Mordor now leading the efforts, right, on the evil side. So that's who we're dealing with right here, okay? So that is what we are dealing with. All right, so we've helped them both. Now we get to talk to her again. The orcs do not know what awaits them in the abyss. The Perhaps orcs do not know what awaits them in the abyss. Perhaps they are learning. Mazog must not be aware of the great evil that lurks beneath Moria. He is, or he would not play such dangerous games. His orcs are no match for what lies in the roots of these mountains. Or perhaps Gorathol, this sorcerer from Dol Guldur, has whispered honeyed lies in the ear of Azog's spawn. He may believe his orcs have the upper hand, but they do not. Ooh, yikes. All right, sounds good. To know, um, minimum level for So that's still working for me right now to give me XP. Is this... That's not better than my legendary. That is not better than my XP giver. That's good until level 85. That's not better than my shield. That doesn't work. So we'll take the most expensive item to sell. What does the sword look like? Oh, actually, that's a pretty cool-looking weapon. I could use it as my cosmetic. Wait, but do we we use a mace? It might not work as the cosmetic. Yeah. Um. So I like to find it. Well, it's one-handed. It might work as the cosmetic. We must keep our foes from Gothrandos, or all is lost. Did it work as the cosmetic? Did it change? Let's find out. It's one-handed, so it might work. Oh, it did work. Look at that. Ooh, I gotta put a really cool glowing effect on it. Don't I have the glowing effect from the new, like the one we use on Zolan? Oh, I think I do, you guys. Oh, wrong button. Um, it would be the Rivendell starter pack. Is that it? Yes. Or I mean, yeah, the supporter pack. Um, I don't have a whole lot of room in my inventory right now, gosh dang it. Um, I'm really low on inventory space here. I can put these into my gear here. That'll go into my carry-all. That'll help me get some space. Perfect. We'll do that real quick. Sorry. Don't want to spend all our time in our episode here doing organization, but I really want to put on that cool shining effect. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so we want the Rivendell Luxury, which is the best one. And I believe that one will have, yes, I would like the horse. Thank you very much. Rivendell Steed Cosmetics. Okay, well, that's the Steed Cosmetics. I forget which one it comes in. Does it come in the... Oh, cool. There's our Rivendell stuff. We'll learn that one. And then um, there it is. That's what I want right there. Drop that Weapons Aura on there. And then I need to drop a Weapons Aura on the actual thing or it won't work. Oh, no, it worked. I already have one on there. So cool. Cool. There we go. Dude, look at our... Oh, man. Look at that. We have a cool sword now and it's glowing. Oh, look at how cool. And our shield's like electric and oh my gosh, and our cool cape and shoulders and oh man, we look so cool. All right, uh, let's continue the quest now, my friends, uh, now that we've made ourselves look cool. We must keep our foes from Gwathrindos or all is lost. We must keep our foes from whatever she said or all is lost. <laughs> the nameless creatures in the depths of the earth are not to be trifled with. But still, Mazark insists on attempting to enslave them. There can be no doubt that the hand of Dulgudur is causing him to try this foolish course. But I have no pity for him. These creatures are deadly, and they approach Gwathen Rendath more closely with each passing hour. And still, Maz uh, Magor does not return. This is not like him to be so starty. Were he not so strong, I would be worried, but Magor trained with Celeborn in the Elder Days and can take care of himself. Okay, so we're talking like a, a Glorfindel level elf, okay guys? So so this uh, Magor is an elf who is uh, very, very, very powerful. He's like Glorfindel, Celeborn, Galadriel. They're, they're the, from the Elder Days. They're a high elf, basically. There are cracks in the walls, not from Gwathendarth. Place these... Um, barely in front of the crack to dissuade the nameless from approaching the cracks. Uh, Burmley is, I think, some kind. I think it might be the light or the crystal. I, I don't know. We'll find out. Elfstone. Yeah, it's an elfstone. Okay, I was right. I was close. I almost remember the lore of the game there, real quick. Again, I don't remember if this is a stone that is from Lotro lore, if it's actually something that Tolkien mentions, but anyway, it's not important because it's cool. So anyway, so wherever we find these cracks in the wall, we're basically, uh, oh, look at that effect. It's like, it's actually like a tunnel. That's cool. So we're gonna stick a, that's a cool effect. All right, we're gonna put this crystal in front of it. There, this little crystal of the elves, and basically of the darkness, the nameless see it. They'll be like, ah, and they won't want to come through. So, that's the goal. It's to make them not want to come through the tunnels. All right, so we can place two more stones here to help protect the elven encampment from basically the nameless evil demons coming through, the cracks and the voids, and from the darker parts of the world. That is what we're doing right now. Again, here's another spot where it has. Look at that cool effect. Where they make it look like a tunnel into the darkness. That's, I just think it's really cool. Cool effects. All right. Uh, we're going to put the stone here. Okay, that should be the best spot to place it right there. Perfect. All right. Next one. Here we go. One more to place into the darkness of the world. You have discovered Zebed Fake. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Come here, dark one. How dare you come out of that crack in the wall? Never come out again. Oh, another one. His friend came out to help him, I see. Well, we have a magical sword now. Slash, 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 slash. I'll slash you to death. Ha ha ha, ha ha, ha ha ha. I'll give him a roar at you. You're dead. Okay. My roars are definitely far superior to my uh, swordsmanship, sadly. All right, there we go. Sweet, and now we just walk back up to her and talk to her again. So that should be a nice and easy quest. Uh, did I just get lost? Am I lost? I did the other one right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so right up there. I'm not lost. We're not lost. We're good, guys. We're good. We're good. <coughs> Drink some water. 
That's not a lot of work fighting off demons, you guys. Okay. <clears throat> Go back and talk to her. We have placed the magical elf stones in front of all the cracks into the dark depths. It should keep them from not wanting to come up. The light of Iorindil's star brings hope even to this darkness. You have done what you could, Zalan, but where the nameless are concerned, I only hope that it will be enough. We must find Mithrandir, if he yet lives. We must find Mithrandir, if he yet still lives. When Mith uh, again, remember what I told you? Mithrandir. Who's Mithrandir? She's talking about Gandalf, right? All right. When first we arrived here at the Foundations of Stone, we did not so at the request of Lady Galadriel and had one primary objective. We did so at the request to learn what the fate of Befell Mithrandir, the Grey Pilgrim in these very depths. Yes, I speak of Gandalf. He passed into the shadow of the abyss and it was the hope of the lady that he might be found and found safe. The elf Magor sought him for many days, but found no sign. Magor still has not returned, Zolan, and I am beginning to worry. There are two places I would have you search for the signs either of Mithrandir or Magor. The top of the bottom portion of the Endless Stair at the Black Lake. When you have searched both places, I hope you will have some sign of either the wizard or Magor. I like that they said like all four versions of his name there. They called him the wizard, they called him Mithrandir, they called him Gandalf, and they also called him the Grey Pilgrim, which are literally four different names for Gandalf. I think he has a couple others too. Um, one's in Dwarven, one's in, and then of course, yeah. You know, and then the, uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, Saruman call him? He's got the mean nickname, right? <laughs> What are those names? Let's see if we can find. So search the Black Lake. Search the top of the bottom portion of the Endless Stair. I like how it's like, the, search the top of the bottom. Oh, okay. That's not a riddle or anything. Oh. All right, well. This is uh, the lake. We might just be able to swim through the lake here. That water looks completely hygienic and uh, not at all gross. So let's start swimming. We're going to swim like super slow. No, no, the music. No, 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 no. Slow swimming because our leg is broken. So we're only able to swim with our arms. I like the swimming in this game. I think it's cool how they do like the regular stroke and then they breathe, you know, like what you learn in swimming class. How many of you have taken swimming lessons? I'd be curious to find out how many can you s of us can swim here very well. I'm a pretty good swimmer. I've grown I've grown up near the beach, so I, I, I like to swim in the ocean. How many of you like to swim in the ocean versus swimming in, in like an actual pool where there's not disturbance of waves? Swimming against waves can be very dangerous. I I'm I've grown up where I have the joke. Some people call me you know some people call me a beach dwarf. I've had people in my family call me the merman because I really like swimming. I've always been a strong swimmer, so I'm always the one that goes out to save somebody if they're drowning. <laughs> but um, you have to know how to save someone if they're drowning too, because when people are drowning, they do extremely crazy things where they might be they might drown you by mistake, like trying to climb on you. So you have to know how to approach someone. So then if you're ever a good swimmer and you're gonna try to save someone, word of advice, you always come from behind them and you try to get under their arm, keep their head up, but make it where they can't climb on you. For you, you grab them from the back and then you just pull them in, holding them up, floating right in front of you, like holding their head up so they can breathe. And then you kind of drag them in, you know, backwards. That's the goal, at least. I've never actually had to do it where someone was panicking like that. The, the, the few times I've saved someone, they were had a boogie board, which is good. So I was able to swim out and help them with my boogie board. That's always good. If you have a floating device, bring a floating device because then they can sit on that and calm down. <laughs> There's your swimming lessons for the day, my friends. Um, but again, I'd be curious how many of you guys, you know, can swim, can't swim. I mean, there's no shame if you can't swim, but I would recommend if you can't swim, maybe think about taking some professional swimming lessons at a pool. You know what I mean? From, from a professional that can teach you how. Because I think it's always good to know how to swim because, you know, our planet has about 80% water on it. So it's probably a good thing to know how to swim in case of emergencies. 
or a flood. I don't really have a lot of floods where I live, um, but I know lots of the parts of the world have many flood issues, so it's good to know. So we need to get up to the top of that, and not to mention, you know, like, yeah, it's usually unexpected a flood, right? All right, let's see here. Hmm. How do I get up there? I'm not sure. I think we might have to go around the entire lake, possibly. We can always swim through the lake to that one that one ring in the middle there. So I think what we will do is, uh, now we've had a nice little swimming lesson. I think I'll end it there, my friends. <laughs> you guys have a great day in Middle Earth. Again, be very curious for you guys. You know what? You don't have to say it if you don't want to. But, you know, you, do you like swimming? Do you not like swimming? Can you swim? Can't you swim? What's your favorite place to swim? Do you like a pool? Do you like the beach? Do you like swimming in a lake, river, that kind of thing, right? So, anyway, my friends, have a great day in Middle Earth. And I will see you all in the next episodes of Voice of the Rings. There's my wonderful Patreons. Thank you to them. Subscribe button's there if I earned it. Next episode will be up there in the top left. And right over there will be another playlist. So check them all out. And I'll see you all in the next episode of Voice of the Rings, my friends. See ya.